Hello. Didn't see you there. Hey everybody. Welcome to the Strim Stream. I am your host, Strim Tom. And of course today we're doing some super cool stuff. So I'm gonna preface this with a little bit of a warning. I'm feeling terrible and very sick. I don't have a lot of energy today. Um, and so I'm just gonna try to get through today, you know, try to give you guys a good show. We're doing a short show today because I am sick, so we're only gonna be streaming until about nine o'clock. Um there's a bunch of reasons for that, but uh, the biggest one is just because I'm feeling sick. So we're only going to have two hours today. I apologize for the short stream on such short notice, but I've been feeling terrible today. Uh, I didn't eat anything yesterday, which is kind of bad. And when I woke up this morning, oh god, I went to work because I had to, and I got into work. And my boss was like, no, go home please. Please go home. You cannot be here today. And I was like, okay, so I did. So we're having a short stream today. I yeah anyway so let's talk monk so if you've been paying attention to the dungeon dragons you know that monks had this cool enhancement pass like here they re-updated the henshin mystic shin tao ninjas by trees super cool they also updated all of the base stances uh they added a lot of cool stuff i'm currently playing as a henshin mystic staff monk gonna see how it performs how it works uh, i'm liking it so far my damage is good i don't really have any of the cool monk abilities like incinerating wave or cauldron of flame i feel like those will be really good and especially because they have add so much supplementary damage we'll have to see when we actually get there uh, for now i just do crazy good damage with the stick uh, so it's not that bad as well uh, smite tainted creature it's pretty good but it's interesting this doesn't work like i thought it did uh, as far as i can tell it doesn't appear to be adding my monk level to my damage uh, and it says it's twice your wisdom modifier to your attack roll, but it's only adding one times my wisdom modifier because my wisdom modifier is 10 and it's only adding 10. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, I don't know what to tell you guys. <coughs> I think the ability is still good as a key dump, but I don't think this ability is that great. Um, but yeah. We're just going to be doing some staff monk today. You know, just throw some meteors out there. A couple things that make this character work good is this item right here, the Elemental Bloom. It's the best staff you can basically get in the game. Uh, the important things about this is this right here, critical multiplier, 18 to 20 times 3. Crazy numbers, it means I can crit every time, all the time. Plus it has paralyzing and bewildering and body feeder. You can't go wrong with an item like this. So we're gonna, we're gonna <coughs> get a group going. Uh, uh, do some quests. I don't know what though, so we're gonna figure that out. I'm supposed to do level 6 quests. I don't remember what's level 6. Um, but yeah, so that's that's me pretty much. I've I've been playing a little bit of the monk. I've been working a lot, so it's been hard. So I haven't really had the chance. Um, hey, what's going on, Vornami? So unfortunately, I just haven't haven't been doing a lot of that. I've been also playing a, my a deep gnome character a lot, which has been a lot of fun. So I'm doing some stuff like that. What am I doing on this character? I don't know. So we're gonna do. Uh, 3 BC clean up. <coughs> there we go. 3 barrel cove clean up. That sounds good. And we'll start it with some of the stuff that's here. The troglodytes get. There we go. Uh, nobody nobody complains about the troglodytes get. I'll just share it so we'll have it as well. Uh, Carl's tomb. There we go. Uh, but yeah, so no, it's been uh, I've been I've been enjoying playing this monk. I uh, like I said I haven't unfortunately got as much chance to play as I thought, but. Duro can, you made it today on time, my man. I love it when that happens. This guy, the hype, official hype manager for the stream stream, uh, you know, always there to keep you guys pumped up with like new content, things like that. <coughs> oh man, we get assembling the real team. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, we're gonna be doing some fun stuff today. It'll be a good time. Like I said, I'm mostly going to be, like, quiet. I'm not going to try to be, like, quiet, quiet. Like, I'll still be talking about stuff. But, like, my lungs are acting up, so I'm wheezing a lot, uh, which is bad. Um, and, yeah. And if I'm sniffling a lot, I'm going to try not to do that. But that's that's hard, because I really want to do that. I actually, like, blew up my eardrum earlier today and, like, lost my balance and fell over. Um, but... <coughs> but yeah. Anyway, the monk's pretty good for to me so far. Actually, we can I can turn off this music, this external music, because we have pirate music to listen to. Dun, dun. Can't hear it very well though. I, I can't tell if it's because it's too quiet or not. I'm not sure. 
Heard from my guildmates that they like the changes, but they still need some work. Well, you know, if you do have suggestions about the monk changes, please go ahead and post them on the forums. Um, I've seen a lot of people complaining about monk changes in game and things like that, but not posting them on the only place you can see them. If it's something you'd like changed, make sure you let the people know who'd like to see it changed. Um, from the people that I've talked to, and this is important distinction because I don't know who other people have talked to, but the players that I've talked to, who main monks, who monk is like their main class, and then play monk as their main class, and could do legendary elite without any kind of issue, um, those people are very happy with the monk changes. But again, those are the people that I've been talking to, the people that have no issues already doing legendary elite. So they were very happy about the changes. It was largely just DPS increases, option increases, and many of them, all of them were split classes, whether it was monk, paladin, ranger, uh, monk, fighter, ranger, monk, paladin, fighter. All of them are considering potentially going pure monk, but we'll have to see entirely how that goes. Um, I did forget the toggle. <coughs> I'm not used to playing a monk, especially not the, the Healy Shintao monk. Do I not have hand wraps anymore? Oh, did I sell my hand wraps by accident? I did. I gotta whip out my fists to beat up on these uses. I don't want these uses to break my weapons. But yeah, so like I said, I'm happy with the changes because I'm just a guy who doesn't who plays monk casually. The extra 75 melee power pretty much gives Henshin Mystic access to more melee power than any class in the whole tree. Uh, I can't speak. And that's <coughs> pretty cool. Having access to more melee power than anybody else. Uh, with 75 melee power just from the tree, you pick up an extra, what, like 4 from feats. It brings up to 79. Grab uh, 70 or 80, or sorry, 88 from Legendary Dreadnought. Grab an extra 30 from leveling. Grab an extra 8 from an item. You're looking at potentially being able to get, you know, close to like almost 300. Um, <coughs> not 300. Like 250 and up melee power. That's pretty cool. Uh, strength base, sort of. This character is actually a wisdom based character. I wanted to try out wisdom to see how it would work. Um, just because there's a lot of really cool abilities you can actually do. Oh my god, now that I'm actually trying to talk, my voice is like disappearing on me. Here, one second, I gotta mute the mic. Okay, there we go. I just have to clear my throat every once in a while. Um, but this character is designed to be a wisdom base. Um, originally I was going with strength base, and then I realized it would actually be better with dex base. So with the changes to the staff formula, the amount of key that you get um, from Henshin Mystic, it gives you two or three key per hit with a staff. With three key per hit, I pretty much never run out of key. There's no situation where I will ever run out of key. Um, so like, I'm at cap here. I'm trying to use my abilities, but <coughs> there's no way I can use them enough keep with enough key so yeah it's uh, it's really interesting in that so I can kind of spend my abilities as much as I want and deal as much external damage as I want um, without ever worrying about running out of key in any capacity um, and as a result it means that I can actually use all my abilities freely um, but because I can use so many abilities including things like Tuma Jade all my different stunning attacks um, being in wisdom stance is going to give me more wisdom uh, as well, it's just going to make me tankier. I feel like Fire Stance would be better for overall melee DPS, but we're going to see. <coughs> Wisdom and Intel. Uh, no, I checked difficulty. Someone asked where... <coughs> what, um... Somebody asked what difficulty it was on. So I had to make sure I, I went in on, on Elite. Um... I don't know... I, w I don't understand what, why you would complain about dexterity base. If you look here, um, Ninja Spy allows you to use dexterity to hit and damage, and that would be no worse than playing as a strength. Like, bear in mind, I can get dexterity here, and I can get dexterity here. Um, you can only get strength of the one tree, so dexterity is always going to be a better option on Monk now. Because Monk can convert any weapon to dexterity as long as it's a centered weapon, I even considered playing as a two-weapon fighter, uh, five-fighter, 15-monk build, uh, that involves dual wielding bastard swords just because you could do it with dex to hit and damage Dexterity is going to give you a better stats overall. It gives you your bonus to hit and damage It's also going to give you reflex save. It's also going to give you armor class strength is not going to give you either of those things So strength is almost like universally better um, 
legendary strength. Dex is almost universally better, so I have no idea why anyone would say contrary, because that's just not true. Um, he, I can just shoot at these guys. See, this is why Hedge of Mystic's fucking cool. Look at this shit. You guys can't do this. Pew, 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 baby. Check that out. No problem. Uh, no, it's 2.5 times your attack bonus. So if, so yes, it is, it's, or sorry, one point, it's 1 1.5 times your uh, main hand or main stat bonus to damage. So if I use strength, so right now my strength is 6, uh, and I have a, so then I get 6 to hit and I get 9 to damage because I had 1.5 times to get my damage. Um, but if I change that to dexterity, then I get to add 1.5 times my dexterity. It's based on your main hand stat. Not, uh, not like whether it's strength or not. So, say you're a hyper agent and you use intelligence to hit and damage, then you use one and a half times your intelligence. It's the same thing, as long as you're using a two-hander. Or if you're single weapon fighting and you have uh, greater single weapon fighting, you get one and a half times as well. All right, attack so slow. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it works on it's it's only just whatever you're used to hit and damage. That's why bards are so interesting because as a swashbuckler, you can easily change your damage to charisma to hit and damage. So if you want to go with a full crowd control build while being full crowd control and not sacrificing any of your DCs and your actual crowd control spells, um, you can add charisma to your damage, but you can add one and a half times, assuming you have enough charisma for it. Die oozes. Eh. But yeah, so it's pretty cool. Like I said, I do like the fact that there's some like weird stuff you can do, like the shooting of the little energy bolts. Ooh, greater, greater heroism. Can't go wrong with greater heroism, boys. No, I rolled a one. I could go wrong with greater heroism. Oh no. Bam. Look at that. I'm gonna do part two of this this stuff. I'm also doing something really cool in this character that I'm gonna talk about in a second here. Um, part two. Um, but something else that's also super cool about this character that I am doing, so I managed to get a really sick item. I dropped a uh, large gem bag. So what I'm going to try to do... Oh, apparently I did a terrible job. What I'm going to try to do on this character is not sell my gems for as long as I can. Apparently I, the last time I sold, I just accidentally clicked it. I want to see how, how many millions of gems I can get into one gem bag. Because I think with 30, you can actually carry every single gem type. So I want to see if I can like cap it out and then have a bag that's worth like a million gold or something for no reason, because I just think that would be cool. Um. But yeah, I think right now, before people can start making accurate assessments of the monk, I think more builds need to be played. Because remember, converting your build that you currently have to work with the new stats may not always work entirely. You may have to just reconstruct your build, whether it's through through a heart of wood. Uh, so whether you're going to do that through a heart of wood or whether you're going to maybe re reincarnate your character entirely, um, it is something that is going to take you a minute to like uh, kind of figure out what exactly you want to do with it. Um, and I feel like new builds are going to come out. So if you don't see um, kind of like these top end builds coming out right away, it might be just because somebody's like trying to figure out how the new way to do it. Remember, there's a lot of interesting new effects. Um, the fact that you get so much wisdom and melee power out of Henshin Mystic seems obvious of how you would want to make it. Uh, you know, like, oh, just you do a lot of damage, you know, because you get sick two-handers. But maybe there's a way you can actually, you know, capitalize on this melee power more than other characters. Obviously, you can't be like a barbarian monk to capitalize it, but... About the stance quick recall? Stance quick recall? What are you talking about? I have no idea what that means. Um... But it's important to realize that, uh, you know, even if the, some of the changes do seem lackluster, make sure you 
Uh, one, investigate claims. It's because some people saying that stands are lackluster, and I'll give you a great example. Um, there have been some claints, complaints uh, from some uh, players that uh, Stunning Fist no longer works in animal form unless you have hand wraps equipped because they recently changed it so that you, to use Stunning Fist, you need to have hand wraps equipped. Um, so it means if you're in animal form, even though you're unarmed, you can't use uh, Stunning Fist because you need to have hand wraps equipped. Um, and some people didn't like this because it meant that if you had, like, you know, a monk animal form player, you'd have to use hand wraps. Now, and this is really important. Uh, if you have this complaint and you are upset about this, I understand that it is a change. However, the only reason you wouldn't want to use hand wraps in one of these builds is either A, you happen to be using a sword and board, uh, and as a result you become uncentered. So, uh, <coughs> sorry, you'd be, you're using a sword and board, but if you were doing that you'd become uncentered and you wouldn't be able to use Stunning Fist anyway, so that's not the case. Or, it's somebody who's playing the wolf exploit build using single weapon fighting and two weapon fighting at the same time. And if you're already playing with an exploit and then something doesn't work with your exploit, you don't really have any ground to stand on, so... Bring up the dialogue box and find an inactive stance. I have never tried that, I'm being perfectly honest. But yeah, so it is true that you can't use, uh, that you, ca you can use Stunning Fist in animal form, you just have to do something you don't want to do, which is equip hand wraps, which would disable the exploit. So, it's not that it doesn't work, it still works, but it turns off the exploit, so you just can't use an exploit while you do your Stunning Fist anymore. I've never heard of this quick recall trick. Uh, maybe I'll try it out. We'll see. Click recall to bring up the dialog box and as fast as you can activate an active monk stance and click yes. Well, I don't know if I can do quick stuff today. Um, I'm pretty, pretty slow today. Uh, that's kind of how we're going to roll. I mean, I know my monk's moving really fast because that's what she does. She's a dwarf. Which reminds me, I want to be in monk clothing. I'm actually wearing like the base monk starter outfit because I haven't found a better item yet, so. Which sounds crazy, but I've just not been very lucky with items in this character. Oh god. Yeah, so this, like I said, this character is a lot of fun. I just do a lot of damage. Also, I have infinity HP. Uh, one of the biggest changes that they made to this character is uh, they changed it so that healing key heals for double what it used to. So now when I use healing key, I'm healing for like, what, 80 right now? And bear in mind, that is not with a ton of, is it with a ton of healing spell power? No, I have 100. So I have 100 healing spell power and I'm healing for 80, which is pretty good um, for such low investment. Um, which means that when you're hitting max level, you're likely able to heal for about 600 or so, probably a little bit higher. Um, so, you know, 600 is something to look forward to. I feel like uh, monks are a lot more self-sufficient, at least the light monks are. Um, dark monks are not quite as self-sufficient, unless you have to be a Henshin Mystic, and you take that new Henshin Mystic's fandangled ability up here, with the Balance and Dawn and all that goofy stuff. Now what I would like to see with this character, is to see how much extra damage it actually provide me to be in fire in sun stance. Of course, if you're going with a strength build, it would give you more damage. That's why I kind of wanted to swap this character into more of a dex build. Um, so that way, even though I'm in ocean stance, this l minus to strength won't affect my damage. So we'll have to see how that actually goes. But, can't know beforehand, right? I don't know. Seems pretty cool. But man, I'm just like... I'm done being sick. I was sick last week uh, some, with something else. I'm sick this week now with like a flu or whatever. So I'm like really tired and no energy and like uh, and, it's just, and stomach sickness as well, which is no, which is just no fun. Like if I had to choose to be like sick in the stomach or not, I'd definitely choose not. Oh snap! The bear form. Look at the, look at those look at those look at those attacks. God damn. Oh, I crit that undead. Ooh, someone popped up in the treasure chest, the most important thing. The lock on the door. But yeah. It's like, think about it like this, okay? Yeah, well, exactly. And the people that you're going to see being unhappy with it are largely the, either the vocal minority or people that didn't read too far into it. 
Um, I had a discussion with, s sort of a discussion. I saw a post where somebody was saying that they didn't like a lot of the changes because they felt that, that nothing was added. So instead of listening to that person, what I did is I took, um, is I took a, the list of things that they had said, um, pretty much the list of everything that they said, and then I filled in the gaps of what the actual changes were and said, no, 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 they actually did. They fixed a lot of these things. This is what they changed in the game. And then they were like, oh, yeah, you know what? That is a g different way of thinking about it. Maybe I should actually play with the changes before I talk about them. And that's that's the number one thing. Just play with the changes. If you have concerns, make sure you play with them. Although I now have a concern. Um, apparently I'm coming through quietly. I know I'm not speaking quite as loud as I normally am during the week. Um, God, what's this next quest? The claw. The one... Uh, scoundrels run. I'm just gonna finish off three beard I'll coast so I don't have to come back here. Oh, we forgot the monk stance trick. Damn it! I was so focused on something else. Okay, we we've got more quests. We'll do more monk stance trick. Yeah, where was the, where was chat spam monk monk stance trick? Uh, chat never spammed monk stance trick. How am I supposed to know? Come on, you guys. I sit here streaming the game for you. <coughs> and then I get you guys not even paying attention when you're supposed to chat spam. You know? You gotta, it's true, you gotta, you gotta kind of like work around it. It's like when you're watching your famous Hearthstone streamer, you gotta be as fast as you can by typing in lethal into chat. Also, I also enjoy the Night Revels update and a lot of the cool stuff with it. I don't enjoy the Night Revels lag, but that comes with any festival. Do your spell points on the character sheet. Oh, for those that you don't know, because someone just asked in my guild chat, I've, I'm in a new player guild, so kind of like a leveling guild where people just get spam invited when they join the game. Now, this can be like a bad thing for in like some games, but in DDO, it really just means that you get like, I don't know, you get to like see stuff in the game, or like you just get to get ship buffs right away. Somebody asked a question, so in case you're new to the game, you don't know this, um, your spell points is this little like purple thing. If you put your mouse over it, it tells you all your individual spell power, spell critical hit chance, and spell critical multiplier. So you can check that right there. Yeah, man. Come on, Twitch chat. All right, boys. We'll try this again. But yeah, um, what did we talk? What was I talking about before? But yeah, monk changes. Just, just play with it. And I have heard some legitimate, like, legitimate complaints from some people. So don't think I'm like, oh, Strip Tom's just like, boy, only he, he's just gonna deny everything. He just wants to defend. Defend turbine whitest night. No, 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 no. There are some problems. Um, the hand wrap durability thing. Well, it's not an epic concern. In epics, um, hand wraps are is like they're working just fine. If you have thunder forged, um, you know, if you have uh, anything above, you know, anything in the epic range, your hand wraps are not going to break. They only break when you hit monsters, which break your weapons. You know, if you're punching oozes, yeah, your hand wraps are going to break. But still, the fact that they're performing poorly in lower levels is something that should be looked at and is something that should be fixed. Um, so, you know, that, that is important. Um, so, they, like I said, there's, there, 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 are some, there are some genuine concerns there. Um, and I've also heard some concerns about sort of the application of kind of the, the ninja spy tree, how it kind of moves it more towards a melee. And w even though it says here ninja training is modified to dex and damage with any weapons, you get things like Sting of the Ninja, which only applies to uh, the certain weapons that say that you wield while centered. Um, it is, it's kind of like things that fit, slip through the gap, which kind of affects heavily how you want to decide to play your character, because it's something that probably shouldn't have gotten missed. Uh, so, I <laughs> playing twice. No one's making me say anything, man. I'm a free mind, free minded individual, okay? I'm gonna say what I want. <coughs> but, like I said, there, there are definitely some legitimate complaints. But like I said, the most important thing is make sure that you you uh, qualify your complaints if you have complaints with the changes. For example, if you say stuff like, you know, oh, monks are bad and they were bad and they weren't improved, 
there are a lot of people who would disagree with you, and those are the monk players. And they're on your server, and you know who they are because they're the guys that always play monk and don't play anything else. Right? I like to play lots of different classes. I'm not a monk player. But I have to say, monk probably has some of the most diehard fans. Like, there are people that like paladin, and there are people that, like, like warlock. But the, pe the guys that like monk literally don't play any other class. They just play monk. They don't do anything else. They just they just play monk. That's all they do. And when monk isn't in a good spot, they either make monks that are good enough to do it, or they just play another game, and then when monk changes, they come back to the game. Like, I, I know two guys that have come back to the game because the monk changes, so. How does it change per level? The same way as it did before. So before, um, the way monk damage worked is it started out as a d6, and then every, I think it's three levels or so, it would go up by a half d6. So, you know, at level 3, you're doing 1.5 times a d6, and at level 6, you're doing 2 times a d6, and blah, blah, blah. And it goes all the way up to level 20, where I think you're doing 4 times a d6. Um, and then there was the enhancement that would allow you to change it to a d8. Um, they had to re uh, eliminate that enhancement, because now that hand wraps are weapons, weapons just deal a d6. And you can't have an enhancement um, that increases the damage of a weapon, like the damage dice. That wouldn't make sense to actually program. Back up, trap. So that like, wouldn't make sense to have as a weapon. Um, and so they, instead they made a critical threat range multiplier. Um, so now it just performs just like a weapon. Um, how does it change per level? That's a great question. I don't know. Uh, let's find out. Um, so what finishing moves? Flurry of blows? No, it's not Fury of Blows. Is it improved on Arm Strike? Key Strike? That's a great question. I have no idea how the damage improves as you level up. Because I know they pretty much just count as weapons now. So I think that... Oh, on Arm Strike. Acquired three times. I don't know. Ba -ba. That's a great question. If anybody happens to know the answer to that, I would also like to know the answer. Because I am being totally honest. I'm not sure. I can't believe I'm doing this. Off by heart. That's disgusting. I need to quit playing this game. Holy crap. <laughs> I didn't even come up here to look at these. Oh, that means I need a break. That means I need a break. Oh, I gotta just gotta do some some fists of light here. Ooh, heal. The only problem I have with fists of light right now is it takes too long to charge. You know what I'm saying? I'd like it if it charged just a little bit faster. Oh, I'll just give these guys a rally and cry. Run real, real fast because I'm a dwarf. So yeah, I think it still d increases the base damage, but you know what? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't even have any hand wraps. So I couldn't. I couldn't tell you how it changes. I did. I skipped this quest last life. I didn't even do three bar three barrel cove last life, because I did. Uh, I did something else. Oh wait, I have the key. Never mind. I don't know what I'm doing. Give me that adventure pack. And then we come up here, and we're gonna do the monk. We're gonna do the monk thing. So don't worry, because we're getting to the end of the quest right here. But yeah, you're right. I probably should just skip this quest multiple, multiple times. It's like there are a couple that I can't always remember. So for example, I can't always remember um, uh, uh, Cult of the Six. I sometimes forget that one, that puzzle. All right, here we go. All right, so you say I'm supposed to change stances? Oh! Oh! It works! Boom! We're out! We're out! No way, is that going to work again? Oh my god. Oh! The fast recall! Legendary fast recall. I did not even know that was an option. Very cool. Very cool. I like that.
That was cool. Okay, thank you for that trick, boys. So it works. God, that, that gets me really... Ooh, Brine Shaman Staff. So here's an example of like items that I think are interesting and I would like to see more of in the game. Brine Shaman Staff right here. The first thing you're going to notice is that it's in attack mod, as it says right there, intelligence or charisma. But its damage mod is strength. I would like to see more of these like flex items yeah, added into the game. I think it would be very cool, say, if there were hand wraps that use your wisdom to hit but not to damage. Um... So then you could at least have like the option to use that if that's your higher stat or something. Um, or just to have items that are potentially so good you build, you make builds around them, you know? Say you've got like a, a really cool sword, but it uses like constitution to damage and like charisma to hit. So you, it's designed, it, inherent design is like a tank type character. Um, so you would then, it's basically a weapon that you can't really use unless you have a specific build. So then somebody would come up with a specific build to use that weapon. I think it would be a cool concept. Uh, that's a great question. I have no idea why that why that bug works. But I am going to use that all the time now. Oh, bad, the fast recalls. You boys saved me. Oh, in case you're wondering and you're like, but stream Tom, how come you're not doing Night Revels? The Night Revels is out. Don't you want to showcase Night Revels? No, I don't want to showcase Night Revels. Because what we're going to do... For those of you that don't know, the stream stream takes place every Monday. That's every Monday. Every Monday. Uh, and so, level 6 elites. Do you know what next Monday is, everybody? Do you? Do you know? You probably don't. You probably don't pay attention to the date in the same level that I do, that I find out of everything a week in advance. But anyway, uh, next Monday is a faded day Halloween. And on Halloween, because I'm just so uh, dedicated to my fan base... I'm not going to be skipping out, spending time with, like, you know, going to some crazy Halloween party or, like, giving out candy to the kids. No! No, 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 no. I'm going to be buying a big, big-ass bucket of candy. I'm going to be putting it right there. I'm going to sit here eating candy and playing DDO. And we're going to do the Night Revels all on Halloween. So that'll be pretty cool. So if you want to see Night Revels, you can catch it here on Halloween. But then you might think to yourself, but Stream Tom... Uh, if you're going to be streaming on Halloween, there's no way you can expect us to watch that. That's ridiculous. I'm going to be giving out candy to kids or spending time with my family or, you know, spending time with kids. You, you know, how can you expect me to just, like, always pay attention here, you know? It's, it's impossible to make that kind of schedule. But you see, I'm doing it on Halloween for you guys. So I, I expect the same kind of dedication back, you know? It's a give and take relationship. Mostly a give. I am giving, but... An estimated level range? I have no idea. I can't even guarantee it'll be on this server, to be honest with you, because I'm collecting the gear on... Actually, I, I will be on this server. I'll be, I'm collecting the gear on Arganesson. So it'll, it'll be on Arganesson for sure. And Arganesson level 30, probably. It's because I want to do it level 35. Because it gives hilarious amounts of XP. If you haven't done it, uh, doing it at level 35 gives hilarious amounts of XP. It's 130k. So, if you're trying to easily get through epic levels, there's six separate challenges. And if you quickly bounce through all six challenges, um, that's 130k each, which is uh, 780,000 experience. So, say you're level 20, get a friend who's pretty good, level 30, get them to drag you through all six of the challenges, and then you're going to be making yourself a sweet 780k in less than an hour. It's a very, very good way to get through uh, epics right now. I'm still looking for someone to do that for me on Arganesson. So if you are willing to help me with that and you are on that server let me know because I have a deep gnome I'm trying to level that I hate playing because it's a wizard and wizards are some of the worst classes in the game by some of the worst I mean the worst class in the game if you guys by the way I am searching for this very heavily if you have a wizard build that's not bad and awful I would love that build um, you might be like but Shrim Tom what do you mean wizard build that's not bad and awful there are lots of great wizard builds have you tried Pale Master yes I've tried Pale Master um but the problem is, Pale Master is so very boring. Pale Master does no damage. Okay? Yes, it's very survivable. Great. And yeah, it's got really good crowd control. Super. And it's got amazing one-shots. Awesome. What do you do when you fight undead? That you get crowd control or one-shot? Well, well, y well, y you know, you, uh... Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I can't do these quests. Okay. It's really great in this small subsection of quests. Whereas on the other hand, if I'm like, man, you know, what? I want to level pretty easy. I'm gonna play fighter. I'm gonna equip a two-handed sword. Bam! Look at this. I'm like max level. 
Because I can do any quest in the game. Because all monsters are, are weak to swords, man. Ooh, Kaneth had just TR. Did you TR into a monk? Like a monk? Or have you tried out one of those new Sylvanas builds? Because um, I personally have tried out a new Sylvanas build, and it's it's kind of amazing, actually. Um, I don't even have a good weapon yet, but oh my god, it feels it feels fantastic. Um, for those that don't know, Sylvanas is a religion that's specific to the Forgotten Realms, which means you have to be playing as a Forgotten Realms character. As well, it's more than just being a Forgotten Realms character. Um, you can't be a f like a Sun Elf or anything like that. It has to be specifically... Um, a purple dragon knight shader kai or deep gnome but sylvanas lets you um uh get plus one to sorry plus two to the critical threat range of all malls that you equip and that is a huge deal plus two to the critical threat range of all malls that you equip means that basically out of the gate with improved critical you're looking at what if any mall an eight uh or sorry a 17 to 20 critical threat range and with the bonus critical threat range from fighter Oh, oh, I got this. Uh, with the bonus critical threat range from Fighter, you're looking at a 50 to 20 times 4. Or, sorry, times 3. And because Fighter gives actually times a plus 1 critical multiplier of all weapons, with combining that with Kensei Tree, you're looking at a plus, or sorry, it's a 15 to 20 times 4, which is amazing. Oh, yeah, you can use Undeath Death every 30 seconds, but that's really boring. Oh, nice. Warlock Fighter. That's pretty cool. Is it like more warlock or more fighter? Like, are you gonna be like a melee, or are you gonna be like more like a tank warlock? Because the first warlock I ever really played and got into was a tank warlock build. Before before they changed the way it interacted with tower shields and full plate, I just went full plate tower shield and blew crap up, and it was amazing. Why would he? Oh shit! I bluffed that guy or something. I did. I did the Diplo. I wasn't looking. Huh? I guess I can't kill him. Yeah. No. Huh? Weird. Whoopsie! I guess I forgot. But yeah, man. I'm enjoying this monk life. It's fun. Like I said, it's it's just it's different, you know. It. I really want the other abilities though, because as much as I like this, this ability. This ability is not as strong as kind of the wave of fire, largely just because of its AOE potential, right? Then that's one of the biggest problems by playing with this character is that right now I don't have the AOE potential that I could have. Um, Keybolt's okay, but it doesn't do enough damage to keep up, and I think it's one of the shortcomings. Um, it's one of the shortcomings of this build, actually, um, is that and all henchin builds in general, which is something that they need to reassess, making it only scale off of melee power, like all of the henchin abilities means that because they scale off melee power, as you get more melee power, sure that powers up your abilities, but that also powers up your auto attacks. And my auto attacks do a lot of damage, so powering those up even more, it disincentivizes me from using my actual key abilities on anything, like, ever, when I can just use melee. Now when you have abilities that deal significantly more damage, and I'm looking at abilities like uh, Incinerating Wave, which is 5d6 fire and force damage, plus it scales with your... Um, with your melee power that you can easily weave into your attacks and do a lot of damage with but like I said for something like um, Keybolt it's just like pew you do Keybolt and it's just not really that good it's not going to give you the same kind of mileage you know oh you needed fighter because that past life yeah man can't go wrong with fighter past life I have two fighter past lives on this character I'm a completionist and I've got three paladin lives and two fighter lives I don't know why. I d well, I don't know what happened. I did the second fight of life because I had like a weird on-hit damage build I wanted to try. It was my last life. So I was like using a crossbow to add damage to it. It was goofy. It worked really well though. I really liked it. Mm. Game is quiet right now. Anyways, but yeah. So I'm I'm having fun with it though. I want, there are some things I want to add to this build for sure, um, and it's like those things are like easy to find, you know. So stuff that I wish I did have in this build right away are things like Tomb of Jade. Okay, Tomb of Jade out of the uh, Shin Tao tree, extremely strong. This ability right here, it now works on all targets. So essentially, like Stunning Fist if you don't have Stunning Fist, which I don't. Oh, thank you, man. 
Oh, so it looks like you need all the caster lives, man. Unless that's what... Yeah, because that's what you have. So you need, like, Sorcerer or Wizard. If you're going to do catch lives, I recommend doing Wizard first. Just because Wizard is the absolute worst life you can do. But once you have Wizard Pass Life, you'll be taking Wizard Pass Life on basically every other caster. Um, because Wizard Pass Life is so goddamn good. Like, Wizard Pass Life gives you plus one of the DCs of all your spells. Right? So it's like taking spell focus, but it applies to every spell. So it's pretty much just better in every way. Come back. Bam, buff everybody with Walk of the Sun. And then while I'm basically doing my combat actions here, I'm going to try to keep my uh, my Fists of Light charged. My, or my healing key. So that way in case somebody's taking a very large amount of damage, I can quickly pump out a healing key. Like so. Yeah, as far as I can tell, it looks like Smite Tainted Creature is not actually doing any extra damage. Because I just, I crit with Smite Tainted Creature and I have a times three critical threat range and it did the same damage as the, the crit that came immediately afterwards, which was not a Smite Tainted Creature crit. So I know it can roll differently, but when you're adding seven to the base that gets multiplied by three, it should be at least a 20 point range, which it wasn't. Oh man! Every time I blow my nose, it gives me like a, a like a huge pain that just shoots down the side of my head. I don't know if that's okay or not. Uh, what is this? Oh, wisdom four, accuracy six. Bada bing, bada boom. Give me that helmet! Holy moly! We do dead predators next, and then after that, we'll do uh, mirrors, sleepless nights. Damn it! Oh no, my quest recall! Holy crap, my recalling skills are garbage. Oh man, I have no... My recall game is just off today. You guys are 100% right. I can't believe this. Did you s You guys saw that recall? Wow. I'm so ashamed. How can I even play a monk when I have recalling skills like that? Like, God. It wasn't even like this swag, like, jumping backwards off a cliff recall or anything like that. It was a straight up just a recall. Oh man, I am s I'm so disappointed. I'm so sorry, Twitch. Oh my God, I'm sorry, world. I'm sorry, God. Please forgive me. Like, what the hell, man? All right, we're gonna try this again. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that again. I I've I've shamed you all enough. Or I brought shame upon my family. So let's try not to do that. See, when I did my stick build, I didn't do it as a half. I I did it as a half orc rogue. Wait, was I a half orc? Yeah, it was a half orc rogue, although it was a dex build. A thousand dollars. Oh god, get out of here. Now I will say using sticks against uh against these is not very fun against undead. Everyone clump up on the bard. Yeah, whatever. Um, because <laughs> here's the thing, and I want you guys to understand this: Wizard at 30 is super good. Arcane Pulse basically means that it doesn't matter what your character you're trying to play; um, you will always be able to do good single-target DPS. Oh, it's time for a boss fight. Oh, don't worry, I have Arcane Pulse, one of the strongest abilities in the game, one of the highest performing abilities in the entire game. Arcane Pulse is fantastic and magical, and it makes the game extremely, extremely bearable as a wizard. Um. But you get that at 29. And then a lot of the extra damage you can get, especially as like a Pale Master for either the healing or just general damage, um, that comes later. You know, that's at, li that's at like 30. Um, so playing a wizard is like one of the worst things in the game. But when you get to level 30, man, I'm telling you, those mass holds, like I, I love when there's always wizards in my party that get, that get those sick ass mass holds and stuff. You know? Oh, 13 intelligence. It really depends. Um, I actually, 
I found it not so bad to play as the as the uh, Deep Gnome if you have access to it. The Deep Gnome uh, PK build, where you basically max out your intelligence. You take the PK of Deep Gnome, you take Illusion's uh, specialization as a uh, Archmage, and then you have PK out of the tree. And then you have an Illusion Focus item for playing as the Deep Gnome, and you have crazy, crazy, crazy damage. Or not damage, but crazy one-shot potential. And basically, any time where you can one-shot stuff, you're going to be laughing. Because of like the ridiculous one shots that you're gonna be doing, like it's it's honestly silly. Um, but I feel like if I was gonna do another wizard life, I'd be tempted to either do like eleven wizard nine warlock, or like eleven wizard one rogue nine warlock, just to just to get through it, because I hate wizards so much. Or I'd even be tempted to go, um, eight wizard six fighter. Uh, six, uh, like, favored soul as, like, a paladin or something. Or even as a deep gnome to get the deep gnome past life. Um, and then just use a, use a mall build because of the uh, Sylvanas. Because you can get Sylvanas as a deep gnome. Or you can for worship Sylvanas as a deep gnome. Hey, hey, we're actually in Dead Predators. I forgot to update the LFM because I'm bad. What are good item effects DDO that add like a D6 damage? Oh, what good are item effects? Uh, I don't believe they're good at all. Actually, infinitely, uh, they're only good. So yeah, I meant. <laughs> okay, checking my math. Ten wizard, one rogue, nine warlock. Although, actually, if you played as eleven wizard, it would uh, still not be very good. So I don't think it really matters. Um. But no, items like that are pretty much no good unless they scale. And even if they do scale, they still aren't very good. Take a look at, like, um, uh, what was it? The Storms, whatever. Um, Storm, uh, Storm Dancer? I think it's Storm Dancer out of Tempest. Uh, so what Storm Dancer gives you is it gives you 2d6. Uh, oh, um, Mira's next. Uh, Storm Dancer gives you an extra 2d6 damage. It's lightning damage. Uh, and it scales off of melee power. Um, so that's fine. But um, even though it scales off of melee power, it's 2d6 lightning damage. So lightning damage, there are going to be some monsters that are going to be immune, and they're not going to take that damage. Oh, oh, that recall was horrible. Holy crap. Oh, my God, I'm so bad at this. There we go. There we go. Fixed it. I fixed it. <sighs> that was a horrible recall. Oh my god, I saved it. I saved it in the end, but it, I really didn't save any time because I had to cancel my recall to do it. Oh my god, this is just the worst. I gotta practice this. I am... I am so sorry, guys. What, is, what quest does this guy have? Oh, Hunter Library, huh. Neato. Yeah, it's, it's a sick recovery. The problem is, see, the problem is, if if some certain things didn't happen, what I would do is I would do like some kind of trick recall where I would jump off of something, and at the same time that I jump off of it and I do the recall, I do the dab at the same time. The problem is, dab is no longer cool. Uh, it has been permanently made uncool. So, um, rest in peace. So I have to think of some way to do something very cool. And while I do it to get a better one, but or like the the ever casual like you just kind of do it, it doesn't even pay attention to you. All right, so let's let's break down some of these uh, let's break down some of these classes. All right, let's see. First life, half elf, light monk. All right, so there's already problems I see right there. Is you're playing as a half elf. Half elves are the ugliest race in the entire game. Um, so you're putting yourself at a distinct disadvantage when it comes to look category. Now you might say dwarfs are ugly. They're not ugly. They're stern, or they're they're very blocky. You know, they're not ugly. Ooh, someone actually just followed me. That was really loud, by the way. So you're gonna hear that. Uh, I'm gonna turn that down one sec. <laughs> but so the big problem with your your half elf monk build is that your character is just gonna be ugly in general. Um, and it's not like it's your character's fault. It's your fault for picking it. You created it. Um, so you'd be ashamed of that. I'm sure the stats are fine, but just the the looks and the cat look category would be just awful. Um, 
half elf druid. Now, fortunately, you can mask the fact that you're a half elf by being in animal form. But even though you can mask it by being in an oh, it just goes this way. What am I doing? But even though you can mask it by being in an animal form, doesn't matter because everyone still knows you're a half elf. Um, so there's that. Next, we got a drow acrobat rogue. 12 arty. I like that. I'm always a big fan of drow. I like the fact that they get that spell resistance that scales off their level, uh, which makes them very versatile. Um, plus, they just get a lot of bonus stats. So it, e it makes it easier for making rogues that like artificers. Anything that requires intelligence, charisma, or, or dexterity. It's kind of neat. Plus, the idea of a drow rogue just seems very cool. Because they've they've got like the dark skin and stuff, and they seem all sneaky. And if you ever like read any of them, dr them their dritz books, it seems pretty good. Even though he's a ranger, but whatever. And then we got half orc fighter rogue barian. Again, it seems pretty good. Uh, you can't really make a mistake when you're going with the rogue barian. Um, you know, you're just combining good attributes from different classes, so it seems pretty good. Um, half orc smashing guys. Shader kai arty rogue. Um, you know. I don't. I've never played it as a Shader Kai, so I don't have an opinion. They do have spikes go through their pa faces, and they do look really, really cool. Um, you know, people with tattoos and piercings are cool in general, so they're pretty. They're they're too a little bit too cool for me. Um, now the actual as the as far as far as the actual class breakdown, I think that is a pretty good breakdown. Um, going with the two levels of rogue just lets you pick up easy stuff out of the rogue tree. Um, now four levels of rogue would probably be better overall. Um, I would recommend four levels of rogue if I was to. If I was to do that again, if I was to do that build that you're doing there, um, I would go with with four levels of rogue, uh, just because it gives you the returning ammunition um, and also a ton of extra ranged power. Over top of that, I don't think the the fourth core or the fifth core of the uh, the what is it called battle engineer is worth it. Next we got uh, purple Dargan knight. Uh, yeah, but there's traps, man. Uh, purple Dargan knight. Fighter Paladin, uh, it was probably just a Vanguard build, so it's a Vanguard build, can't, can't no comment about that, it's just a Vanguard build. Uh, seven Light, Purple Dragon Knight, 18 fighter, seven, uh, 2 Fighter, 18 Bard. Clearly it's a it's a War Chanter build, or a Swash Swashbuckler War Chanter build, not bad. Um, if you're playing as a melee Bard, there's no reason to ever go with the full 20 levels of Bard. Full 20 levels of Bard means nothing, this means nothing. Um, the actual capstones of War Chanter. War Chanter is just garbage, straight garbage. It gives strength. Like, I don't understand. So don't ever use that. Um, and if you're playing as a swashbuckler, it gives you evasion. So for two levels of bard, you can get evasion. Or you could take two levels of rogue and get evasion and trap skills. So never ever, if you want to play a swashbuckler, never go 20 levels of bard. That's a horrible idea. Um, so if there's a splash, it's definitely a melee build. Now, I'm more a fan of the, the, the Spellsinger Bard personally. That's just me, so that's what I would go with. Um, but everyone is a little bit different. Um, no! Oh my god! Oh no! There was no recovery! I didn't even do it at all! Holy crap! I keep talking and getting distracted. Ah, oh, this is the worst. I am so sorry. I'm a bad role model. No, I'm not a bad role model. I'm a bad person. I'm so sorry, guys. I can't. I can't do the cool sick recall. What is this? What is this? Come on. I. Uh, I have four quests here. All four quests, all four quests. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember. I promise. We're gonna be able four house K quests. We're gonna be blitzing through them, and I'm gonna make it sure every single one we're gonna do. Oh God, I'm such an embarrassment to the human race, to the dwarven people, to the monks, and to the fast recallers. <sighs> all right. I I did even I didn't even pay attention I just I just recalled that because I was talking God damn it. Um and then warlock, pure warlock. There you go. Yeah man, if you I I really like the idea of recording lives on a character. That's why I actually have a wiki article dedicated to this character so that way I can uh, keep keep a reminder. Um, 
What was the last one? Chamber of Insanity, Forgotten Caverns, Layer of Summoning, and what the hell is the last one? What the hell is the last quest? Ruined Halls. I'm just going to quickly run through these. Oh, my bad. You know, I got to... I can't I can't tell just by Twitch chat, so I just have to approximate by um playing favorites to uh what I perceive as the as the vocal demographic. See there you go. I can just prove my my uh my scumbag habits by just by just uh trying to appeal to what I believe is the largest demographic, regardless of what actually is the largest demographic. Ha ha There you go. Stream time you'd make one hell of an advertiser. Does the lightning, lightning bolt, monk buff stack? Oh, light, lightning, light. Uh, no. No, it's not. It does not actually. No, no, no. There's no, uh. There's no leeway on this. I gotta, I gotta make sure I do the actual proper recall. If I don't do the proper recall, like, what's going on here, guys? You know, how, how am I supposed to claim that I can even be helpful, that I can be educating, especially, like, I like to think of myself as, like, an educator, that I can help out new players, get them really excited into the game, answer the questions that they don't know the answers to. Maybe they think to themselves, hey, I played a wizard, and before I played wizard, I played Skyrim. And when I played Skyrim, there's this dragon that came down, I can't remember what its name was. Anyway, it chased me into this building, and then I fought these dudes, and then I found a spell book, and I was like, cool, I'm going to equip my spell. And then for some reason it went to my offhand, and I was like, damn, I get a spell in one hand, and I get and I get a crazy sword in the other hand, and then I'm shooting my spell with one hand and swinging my sword, and I'm ripping these like dudes apart that are in this castle or something. What the hell is going on here? This wraith is destroying me. You know? And it's like, damn, that was amazing. And then you come to DDO, and you're like, man, I made a wizard. Damn. And then you look at the classes, you're like, damn, I can play Eldritch Knight. That sounds cool. Dude with a sword and can cast magic. It's just like in that game Skyrim that I played. You ever heard of it? You might have heard of this game called Skyrim that some people have played where this is a feature that you can get that affects your character. Damn. So then dude goes to play Eldritch Knight and has no idea it's the worst tree in the game. And I'm here to help with that. You know, I'm here to here to bring salvation so that people don't get caught. Uh-oh. My bad. I should have said something. Oh god, this hurts. Yeah, I, f I forgot that you were uh, that you're a rogue guy. I'll get you res here. Oh, damn. So that's what I try to do. I try to provide that that service to to my fellow players, old and new, to be both entertaining. And informative. So failures to do the fast recall is unacceptable, guys. We have to be a role model. Um. Got to be, got to be a good role model. Hey, I can use this room. I don't know this. Who swears that that's the best for wizard? Well, actually, you know what? At this point, intelligence. Ooh, we got a guy. He can do it. Going to be completely honest, um, I'm not convinced that it isn't because Wizard just sucks. If I was going to play Wizard, I would straight up play as a, like, uh, like a melee Eldritch Knight because I would just try to skip over it. Because I think Wizard sucks and I hate that class. <laughs> If I had the option to never play wizard again, I would I would take it forever. If I could just either skip the past life or just already have it on every character, man, I hate wizard. I actually like all the other classes in the game. I like ranger, rogue, fighter, barbarian, paladin, cleric, monk, wizard, or sorry, not wizard, warlock, druid, sorcerer, artificer, bard. I like all those classes, but I do not like wizard. Garbage. This the newest guide. That's true. You know, uh, Streamtom actually did write a guide for Artificer. This guy, Streamtom, pretty rad guy, wrote a guide for Artificer. It's super cool if you get the chance to actually read it. Uh, it's about how to play an Artificer that will make you look and play just like Mega Man X. 
So Mega Man X, super cool video game, came out in the 90s, fantastic. It's the it's sort of like a sequel, but it's sort of like a, a separate series alongside the original Mega Man games that came out in the 80s. Really, really good video game series. Highly recommend you try it. If you don't, go you know go go get yourself in a game cartridge and play some Mega Man X 1, 2, and 3. Legendary series of games. You'll get so frustrated fighting Sigma, I swear, and you'll love it. Uh, but if you want to play that in DDO, you can with my friend, fancy dancy guide. It works every time. So, oh wait, I gotta do this right. Oh my god, I'm I'm not even doing this right. Oh my god. Actually, I what if I can str can I streamline this? Hold on, I think I can streamline this. I think I can stream like this. Caverns, forgotten caverns. I can streamline this. I got this. Hold on. We we got this team. I'm I'm gonna make this an easier process. I will not forget. Phew! Take a hundred damage, bitch! It's like the the burning hands is situationally good, you know, dealing a hundred damage to the enemies is not is not bad. Um so it, it, it's, it's a dec decent feature, but... Eh. It's just not a good feature. Like I said, it's not amazing. Again, nothing wrong with being melee, though. If I if I did have the opportunity, um, if I was to change some things, like if they were like, hey, how would you change it? Uh, I'd add item durability in somewhere, and I would definitely make this scale harder. Like, for sure. I feel like this doesn't scale hard enough. See, I'm not a huge fan of healers in DDO because I find the healing is very, very difficult. The damage is extremely spiky, and so you have to be very, very quick in your reflexes to actually keep up on healing. Um, not that it's bad, but that it's just it's very difficult to kind of actually keep on top of. My staff is, like, breaking. How broken is it? Ah, it's almost empty. Uh-oh. Give me those treasure bags. Oh, double mushrooms. That was way worth it to come down here. I gotta meet myself. I gotta blow my nose again. I, 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 uh, yeah. Gotta do that. <sighs> Man. I will not fall to disease. I will stand strong. Uh, at least my voice is not as uh, bad as it was at the beginning of the stream. I feel like once I started talking, as long as I don't stop, I'll be okay for a little while. I was a bit delirious earlier. but Another feature I would also like to pick up on this monk is Dismissing Strike. Uh, dismissing Strike comes out of the uh, Shintao tree as well. And it basically allows you to send someone back where they came from. Uh, which is pretty cool comes with a great few great features because it's a stunning check where it scales with your stunning DCs it's very easy to get a very high save on dismissing strike so you essentially get a death attack for any outsiders and conveniently there's a lot of outsiders in this game all elementals are outsiders Abishai are outsiders and I know everybody hates Abishai demons and devils and Eladrin and whatever uh, just spam mass heal Oh, dude, that is that is not how you do that. Mass heal is actually one of the hardest spells to control. It's one of the reasons why most people will use like cure light wounds, mass, and stuff because as a lower mana cost, heals almost the same, um, and it has significantly shorter cast time. Mass heal is way too long of a cast time to actually be like an, an effective ability. Yeah, the healing aura is pretty good. I'm really wondering how it's going to turn out in stuff like Reaper mode. We'll, have, we'll definitely have to see how that plays out. Bam! That's what I'm talking about. Can I repair my weapons any of these guys here? No. I just gotta repair real quick. I gotta go to the bar. Um, Nexus Lair or something. Gotta get that favor that I skipped out on. Yeah, 
repair my staff, pimp my staff. That's pretty much it. That's how this character works. I basically have to keep repairing my stuff all the time. It's one of the reasons why I don't like to stay up, play a staff build is simply because you have to repair your stuff all the time. Again, not a problem when you get into epics, but is a problem when you're not in epics. So. See, I never played um, Sotor into the end game. I got to like level 25 and stopped playing because I cannot stand the actual gameplay. I love the story. I mean, it's a Bioware game, right? And the story is fantastic. You know, it's just like, just like, um, what what game is that? Um, you know, Knights of the Old Republic, or um, uh, what Dragon Age or Mass Effect. It has an incredible story in that game. But the gameplay is a game I cannot play. It is so, so boring. Part of it could be my fault. Um, I decided to play as a Sith, um, like the Inquisitor or whatever, and then I chose the Sith Sorcerer as my specialization. And then I realized very quickly I was just playing Disc Priest from WoW, and I was like, ah, I don't want to play this, so. I cannot play. Um, so like like I said, it re it really depends. It's just it's not a game for me. I I prefer more the like the combat intensive games. That's why I really like DDO because it's very combat intensive. Combat in DDO is three dimensional, which you cannot forget about. Doing this affects combat. Jumping over something like this affects combat. In other games, it doesn't matter. Um, all that matters is line of sight. Whereas in DDO, you know, like I said, combat's three dimensional, um, which is one of the coolest features about about the game in general. You know, um, and I'm really glad that DDO exists because it kind of gets to show some developers like this is what you can do with a game this is what you can build in a combat system so I was really excited when Elder Scrolls Online came out um, that game had a similar combat system yes it does have kind of like the the button mashy rotation -y kind of abilities of your standard MMO but again it's a three dimensional uh, like action MMO um, and I really like that I like three dimensional action MMOs I probably said that already but give me, give me them three dimensional action MMOs Quick Strike works when I'm not using a staff, eh? Yeah, it does. Cool. <laughs> like you can see me. I actually, I do that all the time. Oh my gosh. Whenever something happens and I'm like watching them, I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And then I'll like be like, realize I'm sitting in like dead silence in my room. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah, um, <clears throat> no, no one can see me. It doesn't matter. But that's the best part. On the internet, no one can tell you're a dog. You know, it's, it's the old adage. Alright. So now I just step onto these things. Actually, I'm going to use light, uh, light fire, l one of these. Might as well be walking on the sun. Bam. Look how confident this guy is. Look at how confident this guy is. He's just going to stand up here and fight the fire elemental on the fire pad? Oh, baby. 27 reflex save at level 8. Get on my level. Huh, I'm really good at this. Um. No, it didn't work. What? No. I tried to do it, but it didn't work. Ugh, I was like midair. I got I got to figure out I got to master this. This is taking practice, but we will get it, team. Don't worry. I'm so glad you showed me this. This is giving me like an entirely new thing to focus on. Like I thought I was good at Monk or like I, I was starting to learn how to play it. Oh my god. This is an entirely other level. It's like this insane metagame. Oh. Fire breath. Traps, 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 traps. Oh, you're on DDO on the Tomb of the Immortal Heart? It's a good, qu good quest. I did that earlier today. Um, I really like Necro 1. I think it's cool that it forces you to kind of play with other people. The problem is sometimes you can't always get the groups that you would like to play with, which is obviously a big problem. Um, but it is pretty cool. I also like that these oozes are like fighting each other, which is hilarious. Bam! God, that feels good.
No, can't search the door. Uh oh. Okay. I guess we're not doing the optionals. Not today. Whoop. I also do like the fact that it's some passive key regeneration, so. Yeah, people can't get to group. Well, I find mostly just for Necro One. The problem with Necro One is it's a low-level pack that doesn't war that doesn't give you enough XP to warrant actually like buying for a lot of players. Um, so a lot of players just generally don't want to, to get things like Necro One. Um, Necro Two, I usually I've never really had difficulty getting a group for Necro Two. A lot of people actually like the Shadow Tomb areas, especially because Shadow Crypt is one of the best farming things for epic and high-level characters. Like. Or it's like, not epic, but like long-term players, they love farming Shadow Crypt. I farm Shadow Crypt every single life. I run Shadow Crypt like six times because I love Shadow Crypt. It's like one of the best quest areas in the game. It's cool. It's interesting, um, and it kind of I don't know. It just shows you the possibilities of what kind of quests you can build in DDO that has some complexity to it. I love it. I think Shadow Crypt is a really well-designed quest. Plus, it gives like thirty billion XP every time you run it. So. But Necro One, I wouldn't even buy, and Necro Two, I also wouldn't even buy, because fuck Nec or not Necro Two, Necro Three, because like fuck Necro Three, <laughs> Necro Three is a horrible quest. And if it was up to me, I would never buy Necro Three. Bam, healing the. Healing the gnome. Oh, the guy can heal himself because he's part robot. That's interesting. Um, so I can definitely see that as being frustrating. Um, that's why I'm very fortunate. The two servers that I play on, Galanda and Argonessen, are very, very populated. It also depends on your time of day, right? Uh, some servers happen to have more European players. Some servers happen to have more epic players and things like that. Um, although if you ever are curious about the new player population on your server, cool thought experiment. Make a new character. So go to Korthos, right? Make your new character. Be level one on Korthos. But don't skip past Jeets. Play through the opening quest, even though it's crazy boring. Play through it, and then be on Korthos' snowy side. And you will be blown away by how many players are running around in snowy side Korthos. That just, they downloaded the game off Steam, or they saw an ad on Facebook, or they played D&D &D with some friends or some Pathfinder, they googled Dungeons & Dragons online, and instead of hitting, you know, uh, like, uh, Roll20.net, they're hitting Dungeons and Dragons Online. And they go, oh, that's kind of cool. And they download and they play it. You'll see actually a surprising number of players there. The quick recall for the quick logout? I've never tried that. I will have to test it out. <coughs> yeah. One thing I have noticed, I think overall as a general trend, is not that there are less people playing the game, but a lot of the people that you personally used to know stopped playing. And that happened to me too. A lot of the people that I used to know that played this game stopped playing. Um, but if you look at guilds, gu a lot of different guilds are still thriving, or players just change hands, things like that. There definitely are a lot of dead guilds. For example, on my server, we have pariahs. Apparently pariahs back in the day was full of a bunch of just squawking asshats. I don't actually know. I took a a two-year break, my guild was gone, and I had to join a new guild, so I just joined Pariahs because I was like, ah, YOLO, what's, what, what could go wrong? Why not join Pariahs? Um, I could intimidate this guy. Next to my move key shout. And I miss him with my intimidate because he's too far away. Ah. Um, so it's, it's important to remember that there might actually still be active guilds and communities out there that will be willing to accept players like yourself. So always make sure you look around and see if you can find whatever the best option is. Um, especially if you're looking for some new friends to play with. Because like I said, there's a, there are a surprising number of new players that are always kind of like looking at the game. So you just kind of like, you know, you always got to check it out. There you go, exactly. Plus, yeah, you have a stake in it, right? So you don't really want to leave. Level six raids. Let's go. And now let's load up Chronoscope. The Chronoscope. Convert group to raid group. Pick up all our rewards. We're going to go do Chronoscope. Uh, I can pick up some hand wraps, actually. 
Uh, hand wraps. Cursed Mewing hand wraps. Do I even need hand wraps? I don't think I need hand wraps, but just in case, I'll take these ones. Yeah, it kind of does. Well, it's because I'm changing sta changing uh, stances, right? So my character puts their hands together, and then all hell breaks loose. Fire Absorption? That seems pretty good. Fire Absorption seems not bad. I, if I get Reinforced... Oh, there it is. Re reinforced. Chest piece. That's that's the best one, by far. Yep, it's in the market. Uh, we'll share it. It's on the north side. There you go. Become the, like, the owner of the guild. That'd be pretty cool. That's the reason why I like being in this guild and I am an officer in this guild is because whenever I, I have a new friend to play or anything like that, I can always just easily invite them and say, hey, come try out the game, join my guild, you'll always see when I'm on, you'll find other players to play with. Um, even just some of the leveling guilds, like the one I'm in, even though we're not super like close, I don't really know anybody in the guild, that sort of thing. I like the fact that you know whenever people have questions, they want to know anything, I can very easily answer their questions and, you know, and let them know what's up and, and, what, and what they can do. And like, and you know, even the simple stuff that you don't even think about. Like some people ask stuff like, where do you find spell power? You know, what affects this stat? How does this work? Hell, I even had somebody ask me today, just something that's not intuitive. If I have Ninja Spy, which is let's use your dexterity to modifier to hit, dexterity modifier to damage, but my strength is higher, is it going to use my dexterity? No, it will use your strength. But again, it's it's not in intuitive in the game, and so you, you may or may not think about that. So those are the kinds of simple questions that can still come up. Where's page up on this? There it is. Page up. Here we go. I'm trying to like type stuff. Oh, it said here you see two values. Mm, flurry blows. See, and that's this is why I think it's important to choose words. And I will say this like repeatedly. So, uh, on the DDO subreddit, someone posted today, oh, well, and I stopped playing in 2010 because the game was dying. And that seems really odd to me. That seems like an odd thing to say, because it's 2016, I'm still playing this game. The game didn't die. The game's not dying. Right? Like, dying is like, oh, there's an animal, I'm hunting it, I shoot it, and I'm going to eat it, the animal is dying. Right? It's not, it's not, it's, I don't leave it on the ground for six years. Doesn't stay there for six years. It's dying. But DDO is getting active development. We're getting more updates than ever. They're getting bug fixes. Um, you know, we're having more communication this year than we have in the past on so many different topics and issues. There's a lot of really good things coming. Games not dying. So I can understand uh, when people do have like concerns like that. You know. Oh, no worries, man. Maybe next time. Um, I do understand when people do have concerns like that, and they are they're worried that you know the game isn't quite as populated or anything like that. But that's also important to remember that the game might not seem as fun, um, but that that may not actually just be the case. You might not find the game as fun. Um, I think it's really important when you have the chance to take active breaks from the games that you like to play. I really like to play DDO, but there's a reason why I've taken like a year long break from time to time. Because if I play this game forever, I'm going to get burnt out to the point where I won't ever want to play it anymore. But if I take a break every once in a while, and I kind of play other games that I enjoy, and it will kind of help me solidify what I like about the original game, that stuff, you know? It, it's, it's important to take breaks, whenever you can. And I like how the, all the site workers are just standing here, until they suddenly turn into Typhlings! Ha ha ha! So yeah, um, yeah, the shield's coming out of the bear. 
So it's, but like I said, it's, it's important to take breaks whenever you can to kind of keep keep your interest in the game. As crazy as it sounds, it's like it's the same thing with like work. That's the reason why you got to take like vacations and stuff. If you work all the time, of course you're gonna hate your job. It's the same thing with like even a video game. If I play this all day and every day, I'm gonna hate it. That's why at some point I'm probably gonna take a break when I actually have some time off from work. I'm probably gonna take a bit of a break from DDO. I'll still do the DDO stream, but I'll probably take a bit of a break and play through the new Destiny expansion and stuff because I really like that game. I have no complaints about it. I really like it. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I just happen to. It's a good MMO shooter. It's the only MMO shooter, so. Yeah, I can't play League of Legends anymore because that game makes me really, really angry. Like, like really, really angry. <sighs> That's not the game's fault. Yeah, it is. A plot. A betrayal. <coughs> We should heal Caratrix. There we go. We're just going to three-man the Chronoscope, by the way, so no, no big deal. Ugh, I'm so slow. Ugh. Yeah, I also think DDO is in a better spot than it was in 2010. More build diversity, uh, more, more players, better trees, cool items, cool spells and abilities. Yeah, exactly. But I also think it's important to, to have passion, right? Give me any aid. Yeah, bull strength, eagle splendor. Yeah, baby. Right. I I think it's I think it's very much important to like to be critical also of the game that you play. Like, you know, I want Warforged to be better. I'm very vocal about the things that I want Warforged to be better. I've I've spoken in repeatedly that I think things that are not explicitly positive energy. So monks healing key being positive energy, I have no issues with monks healing key being positive energy because it is a positive effect. It's 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 from the light. They added it for the game. I am totally cool with that being positive energy, and it heals half to Warforged. But why in hell does wholeness of body positive energy? It's wholeness of body. Robot Warforged understand their own body. It should heal their own wounds fully. It's to me, it seems like an oversight, both in terms of like the actual design of the game, but not only just the design of the game, but also like you know, just the continuity. It just it doesn't to me. It just feels like it doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's one of the things that I would I would like to change. But we can have like civilized discussions about it, you know. And and st and stay on topic and not and not just like the game's different. I want to change and, uh, and type of stuff like the game is dying. Because remember, every time you type on a forum, the game is dying. A new player reads, "Oh, the game is dying. I'm not even going to try it," even though that may not be the case. I mean, it might be in the best place it's been in a while. That's why I just think it's important to choose your words, especially if you are opinionated. I'm not saying don't silence your own opinions, right? D d I'm not saying mo silence yourself. I'm saying moderate yourself. Just read what you write before you send it and say, man, could this potentially be damaging to the thing that I really enjoy? Saying, I don't think aspects about this game are enjoyable. That's a fair criticism, you know? If you if you feel really burnt out from the TR train and you kind of want something new, that's a totally fair criticism. Saying, oh man, I feel like the game, the balance is moving in a bad direction with respect to the how much monsters damage the monsters are dealing and stuff, and it could be difficult for players to get into certain aspects. Very fair criticisms. Um... But again, like, the game is dying, uh, the developers don't care, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, of course the developers don't care. That's why they make the game content, and they have, like, that's why they got Cordovan doing the live streams, and they show how much they care when they do, like, the big live events, uh, where they, like, talk about the pre-patch stuff and what went into it and what challenges they had and what they're really excited to bring out. Yeah, it's because from, from all these assholes, they just don't care about the game, right? Like, ah. So like I said, just just be careful about, or not be careful, um, but, you know, and I'm not saying always paint stuff in a positive light. Just make sure you choose your words, guys. If you were given the opportunity to add one, one half classes to the game, uh, what would it be? Uh, let's see. If I could add a half class to the game, um, I'd probably add, like, a half ass uh, for sure. Half-ass seems like it would be a pretty good class, um, because it's not like a full-ass. Um, then again, you also have access to half-wit as like as like a good option as well. 
Although you also, even better than half-ass, you also have stuff like glass half-full available to you as a class option. Um, and I feel like glass half-full could have some good options. Because um, remember, remember, like if you're talking about positive energy casters, glass half-full, that's that they must get some amazing bonuses to positive energy with glass half-full. So, as opposed to glass half-empty would be the counter class. So I'm not sure which one I would do. Oh, one or two classes, not... Not half classes. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. <coughs> um, yo, raise your sail. This is a shrine. Oh, I'll, I'll heal you. Um, good question. What classes would I add to the game? See, the problem is, there are a lot of good classes. And it's difficult to say which ones would actually make good fits to the game. So I'll start by saying how I would add, choose, <coughs> what kind of criteria I would put. So when I think of new classes that I would add, uh, we're going into the bank, by the way. So come into the bank when you leave the tavern. Um, what kind of class would I make? I would make a class that would have a mechanic that we don't already have in the game. So, like, the release of Warlock is kind of like the way I would want a class to go. Now, not in exactly the same way, so not saying, um, which is ab something that is absolutely true, Warlock, in a lot of ways, is was kind of a little bit overpowered when it first came out, and as well, it, it definitely overperforms in the lower levels because of its abilities and its mechanics. However, its ab abilities and mechanics are completely unique to the character class itself. Unique to the character class, unique to the game. I just realized I didn't have this on my bar, so I can't intimidate stuff, which I really want to do. Um, and I think that's a really good thing. Um, adding new abilities that nobody's ever seen before, one, makes it more flashy, makes it easier to sell different copies because you have something new to put in like the trailer for when something new comes out, um, which I'm always very excited about when there's going to be new stuff coming out to my favorite game. Um, oh, I, I got to be, be near you guys to healing key. Um, so, like, the release of Warlock kind of proves that there are still new features that we can add to DDO, because you can add an entirely new way to combat monsters. The Eldritch Blasting is something I never even thought of existing in the game. Auto attacks that are not physical, right? Something cool and unique and new. Um, to be honest, and I know this is, like, definitely a pipe dream, I would actually like to see a functioning combo class in DDO. Um, so something that is not, like, what we have right now, which is Monk which I would say is not a functioning combo class. It's not that it's bad, um, but it just doesn't function that well. Um, the combo abilities are extremely clunky, um, so you, instead of having something like, um, like if I look at my, the way my combos work here, if I touch a key, if I open a door, if I, hell, like tumble or anything like that, it breaks my combo. Tumbling breaks the combo? Horrible. So I'd either like to see a revamp of Monk or an entirely combo-based class. It's one of the reasons why I've been like, man, why don't we actually see a class just like the Warden in Dungeons & Dragons Online? Um, that would be a class I would love to see. A, a class based on a three-piece combo that uses special attacks based on that. However, again, it has been done in Monk. I'd rather see Monk get cleaned up first. God, what would you add in? Psionics, I think, could be very interesting. An entirely separate resource or a way to interact with the game, I think, could be very cool. Um, I'm not sure entirely how they would implement that. Again, the problem is, even when I pull from other games, DDO is kind of one of those things where you can already make whatever character you want, really. Um, which sounds crazy, but you really can. Um, you know, DDO is the kind of game where, like, oh man, look at all these guys. Look at how they're all stunned. I'm gonna aggro this guy. Uh, DDO is the kind of game where you can really make any character you want. Um, so, like, I'm making a Staff Monk who's got crazy healing magic. I'm pretty tanky, so I'm actually tanking Blood Plate right here because I'm able to hold aggro using my concentration. Um, you know, I've got crazy magical spells I can shoot at my enemies, so I can kind of feel like I'm playing, like, you know, Avatar the Last Airbender or some crap. You know, I definitely feel like a monk on B for Heals. And buff. I don't even have air on my bar. If I had air, I would probably do an air buff as well. I'm gonna try to grab aggro here. Go 
got a heal in five, so stack on me for heal. Ooh, focusing on this fight now. Because I'm also I'm trying to keep everybody alive as well as fight and tank the boss. Because I know my health is fine, but I'm also trying very hard to focus on the health bars of my allies, as, a, as opposed to just my own. Again, one of the cool parts about being the more versatile character, especially because healing key heals for double now, that's actually something I can do. Without, like Just being like, oh yeah, I'm going to do some minor healing. I'm actually keeping up both my allies right now. Because my druid is completely out of mana, and the bard is almost out of mana. Alright, buffs on me. So we get some Walk of the Sun going here. But yeah, I, I'd like to see Psyonix, actually. Um, I think that'd be really cool. But yeah, new classes, that's really hard to say. Um, damn, I, to be honest, that's only, that's something I hadn't really thought of. I'm so focused on like kind of like improving aspects of the game design. So looking at things like um, how can we improve different aspects of the, uh, the, class, the individual class enhancement trees? How can we improve the new player process when it comes to the, the pre-built paths, you know? How can we improve all sorts of different things? So I'm definitely not thinking about uh, usually the um, extraneous features. Eh, like that. Nice, we got them. Extraneous features like adding new classes to the game. I mean, consider the fact that DDO has like 15 classes or something crazy, right? Or 14 classes? So if we were to add a new class, like what the hell would it even be? We already have two pet classes where the pets don't work. Um, we have two divine classes, or three divine classes, a divine melee and two different divine casters. I mean, you could have like a divine range, but even then. And you could even classify Warlock almost as a divine ranged. I mean, given the fact that Warlock kind of scales very heavily off of, you know, the enlightened spirit tree where they kind of pull a divine energy, you can almost consider that as being like a divine class. Or even... You know, an Infernal class is still sort of like a Divine class. I mean, is that going to reach? Nope, too far away. You know, an Infernal class is sort of like a Divine class, you know? So that's when it becomes really hard is to, like, what what would you add to the game? So I'm just not sure. If I, if I had a choice, I would add the Warden from Lord of the Rings Online, though, in a heartbeat. I love that class um, so much. It's the best class ever in any video game. Lord of the Rings Online may not be the greatest game, but it does have it does have the um, the Warden class in it. I'm coming. Eh. Eh. Monk. Oh, got him. Do you think it would be divine or arcane? The thing is, would they add new epic destinies? Remember, they have 12 epic destinies and 14 classes. The only classes that aren't represented are Artificer and Warlock. All the other classes are pretty fairly represented. Um, so, I'm not, again, not entirely sure how they would add new epic destinies. I know that there are some issues with coding with epic destinies. I'm pretty sure that if there's something like anything that was coded in 2010 with the release of Free to Play and Menace in the Underdark um, is almost like is very difficult to rework to work with from what I can tell so if there are changes that get made to that that whole system so all the epic destinies things like that if changes are made um, there'll be like miracle changes or there'll probably be like a rework coming at some point there is a monk epic destiny it's the Grandmaster of Flowers we just don't talk about Grandmaster of Flowers Right. <laughs> 16 classes and well you need 4 new destinies man a new destiny for each tree that'd be interesting I could see that hey we just finished blood plate and we're just doing a bit of a clean up here come here you bastard oh he's immune to fire attacks eh and he heals well, I guess unless it comes down to me, I can't shoot it, so. Yo, man, then you get to play a sick new class. So, that'd be pretty cool. <coughs> uh, 
<clears throat> I guess I could see something being added in. Like maybe like a like a Night Stalker or something, or like a Templar or something. Maybe like a, a Holy Warrior, but that's not specific like a Paladin, but something more designed for sword and board. I definitely like to see something that's more sword and board oriented. Fighters, Paladins, and Barbarians all kind of take up the two-hand mantle. And I'd like to see a class that is like explicitly sword and board. That's something I would like to see for sure. Again, Warden is sword and board, so they should add the Warden in. To Turbine, add the Warden into the game, please. My god. If you see, and again, it's not that I wouldn't want Epic Destinies. It's that imagine if I get to choose th the development cycle, man, I would choose like a new arty tree. Like if we're like, if you're like Strim Tom, what would you put as an arty tree, a favorite soul tree, and a druid tree? And I can answer that right away, guys. If we're playing, uh, if we're playing this game, uh, you know, I want right away. Uh, oh, what? I fell through the floor. Okay, I want that bug fixed. Um, but right away, look at that garbage. Uh, I would want a repair focused artificial tree. Immediately. No questions asked. Um, with Reaper mode coming out, it would make a great addition. It would allow, you know, somebody who is an artificer to focus on healing their Warforged allies and kind of make it easier, especially on the party dynamic. So I'd be very interested to see, in like, a repair-focused Warforged tree. Maybe all about enchantments, buffing your allies at different times. Almost like a bard, bard-type character, bard-esque character. Like I said, with the temporary enchantments and buffs and boosts that you can kind of micromanage on a different character. Right? I think that would be very interesting. Um, almost something akin to, like, say you had, like, five points, or, like, like five buff points, and you could spread them around however you like, and different buffs cost different amount of points, but it's not that you don't have them, it's that it takes three to put a buff on one a member of your party, say, leaving you with two fresh points, and if you want to add an another buff into a party, you might have to take it off or something like that. So, uh, arty fleshies are bad. I don't know why you would play one. So, if you're not Warforged, you're bad. I mean, that's that's definitely a subjective thing, for sure, but I don't think it should be. I think you should know that you're supposed to play as a robot when you can heal yourself. So, that's just, that's just, that's just obvious, man. That's just, that's just obvious. Um, and then, the same thing. Favorite soul? I would love to see a favorite soul tank tree. I, you know, paladins get the sacred defender, and uh, fighters... I almost said warriors. God damn it. Uh, war or <laughs> fighters get these stalwart defender tree. Is there nothing else to do here? I don't see any more of these people. I don't know where they are. Oh, oh, the city guards everywhere. Oh, Snowbreach Adventure with 300 life. Why isn't he helping? What the hell? He's got 300 life left. Um, but I'd love to see like an actual defensive tank focused uh, favorite soul tree focused largely on like. Um, you know, shields, temporary buffs, and things like that. Um, one of the things that I know that a lot of people may not actually like that much are temporary hit points. But if you know anything about the new Reaper mode coming out, uh, self-healing is going to be madly nerfed. So self-healing as a tank is not really going to be an option. However, self-shielding with temporary bubble effects and shields will be very useful. Anything that provides a shield has so much more extra mileage to it because it doesn't get reduced by 33%, or sorry, by 66%, like all other forms of self-healing. So that's something I would very much like to see if you were to build a favorite soul tree. Again, this is just me. Now some of you might think, well, why would you do that? Or a pairing tree? What if you don't want to play Reaper mode? Well, then all you have to do is just throw into these trees some low-hanging fruit that makes them as good splashing options, or make them as good options to for everyone else to take, but they're still designed with having full utility in mind when you think about different difficulty settings like the Reaper difficulty setting. So that's just my thoughts on it, on, on different enhancement trees. <coughs> I know, right? I'm, I've never heard of an artificer fleshy. I don't even know what that is, so. But yeah, adding a new class? I'm not entirely sure. There are a couple interesting classes when I think of, like, uh, other aspects of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but the problem is a lot of them usually get taken over by what we have in DDO. Um, make a favorite soul fighter type class like the old Templar class. Well, that's the thing. I would like to see like a, uh, like the old Ed Templar class, something like that. I think that would be very interesting. Um, so consider like another problem with having extra classes in DDO. I think that the fact that there you could add different classes. So for example, uh, from the uh, Complete Mage book, there is the class the Wu Gen. 
And the Wu-Gen is effectively an elemental caster, akin sort of to what they do in like Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Sort of this elemental caster type. You get like a focus. They use special tattoos on their body. They have to pick taboos that restrict what they can do. Um, and they're, they're almost like monk spellcasters. Very interesting. The problem is, yeah, they focus on an element, but so does Sorcerer. Like, Sorcerer also focuses on an element. So, like, if you make a Wu-Gen, you basically already have that in Sorcerer, because Sorcerer has four savant trees already built into the class. So then how would you make a class that has that built in again? All right, two more guys, and then we'll go to the next part. Right, so it's not that I wouldn't want to add these things. Similarly, like War Mage is a really cool concept. Oh, bridge? Oh, I'm coming. Uh, similarly, there's the class, the War Mage, uh, out of the complete arcane as well. Um, and the War Mage is basically a uh, medium armor using weapon fighter that gets ex access to only, or well, almost exclusively, evocation spells. Uh, interesting class idea. But we have that. You can make an Eldritch Knight. You can make a, a, like a Warlock. You can make classes that focus on spells. Oh, oh, that did not work. I'll just nuke this guy from here. Take that. Eh, get him, get him. Cool. Let's go. Oh, did we not talk? Give the talk to Tremus. Let's do that. Did somebody pick up the key? Cool. Tremus wizard source at the spell point system, but that's exactly what DDO does. Exactly. So that's why I find it hard to choose traditional sources for actual spellcasters to take from DDO because a lot of the the good uh, prestige class options are kind of added in already. So like. Um, I don't I don't have it here. I lent it to a friend. But if let me let me pull this up. Um D D three point five prestige classes. Prestige classes are generally like a pretty good place um place to look when you're looking at ulterior classes or what you can kind of build into. But the prestige class list that they had for Dungeons of Dragons is kind of what they used to build the enhancement trees in the first place. Like all the way back in the day. Um I have no idea why this page isn't loading. All right, here we go. So 3.5. Uh, man, it doesn't even have these classes in here. That's lame. All right. Uh, da -da. Here it is. Oh, it has all of the classes. Damn. I just wanted the ones from the book. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, Dungeon Master's Guide. Here we go. Alright, let's look at Dungeon Master's Guide, okay? We're going to look at the prestige classes straight from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Okay? So... D this is the ones that are official Dungeons and Dragons came out with the fucking Dungeon Master's Guide. This is what was designed as prestige classes. Arcan Archer, already in the game. It's part of Ranger. Assassin, already in the game. It's part of Rogue. Blackguard. Could be something that could be with Paladin. I think that would be something that would be really exciting to release with the um, I cannot remember the name, but with the vampire expansion that they want to come out with. I think that would be really, really interesting. Uh, Dwarven Defender. Again, that's essentially just saying is that you're playing as a tank class. Um, a lot of people, like, we already have this as a tank class option. Uh, that's both Stalwart Defender and Sacred Defender. Uh, Shadow Dancer. Again, Shadow Dancer actually turned into an Epic Destiny, so we can't really use that. Um, Archmage. Uh, again, that's just a that's just a wizard. Uh, what do we got here? Eldritch Knight. Uh, Duelist. Yeah, Duelist is essentially like Swashbuckler. Yeah, Ravenloft, that's the one. Thank you, man. I can never remember Ravenloft, and I do not know why. Um, we have Hierophant, which is just powerful druids. Um, I don't really, I wouldn't know really how to add that into the game. I don't know if it's actually about that, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's mostly about the deities, right? 
And then you have Mystic Thurge. I think Mystic Thurge would be a very, very interesting option. A spellcast a class that could pick from any spell list they want. So a, and a Divine and an Arcane Caster. I would be very interested to see how that would work. Oh, you're going to stand up there? No problem. I'm going to beam a death this guy. Boom. Take that. Take this. Where are they? Where'd he go? Up here. And then Thaumaturge, a summoner. Right? So those are your, those are your base prestige classes. Um, a lot of those, again, it's not that they are bad, bad ideas. It's that they kind of like already exist in the game in some in some way, with the exception of like Blackguard. And I think Blackguard would be very interesting, but again, that would be something that would, release, that would certainly be released if Ravenloft was to come to the surface. Blackguard would be come out in some way. Potentially it would be like as an iconic character class. For example, like a Blackguard vampire would be very interesting as an iconic race. I think that would be interesting. Sword and board that make mass bastard swords good again. Yo, like yeah, like like uh, uh, who was it? Yeah, like Durocan. We got Helm ba making bastard swords great again. That's something I would definitely like to see. <coughs> the problem is, it makes you proficient. It doesn't make you centered with bastard swords. So you can't make a bastard sword monk build. You would have to be an evil alignment to be a blackguard. Yes, that is correct. But technically, you had to be an evil alignment to be an assassin too. And they added assassin into rogue. So, no vampire will be the race. <coughs> oh, druid absolutely does. Uh, Druid's twenty seventeen, by the way. Like right now, is there's going to be the favorite soul pass? I think is is coming up next after monk. Um, so that that should be either by the end of the year or with the coming with the new year, um, and then after that we'll be getting a druid pass. And druid pass is going to be looking at much more than just the actual enhancement trees, which they will be looking at, but also looking at things like uh, the actual animal forms and their interactions. So that that is coming. That's the cool thing about their <coughs> there's the fact that there's multiple people at turbine. Um, Sometimes they'll be like, you know, you'll have one guy working on one thing, like the Druid Pass or something, and you'll have another guy working on something else, like making a new class or a race. Like, if you guys haven't noticed, um, a lot of the new items, especially some of the ones out of Slave Lords, and that, that new cosmetic that you can get, uh, where did those come from? Art designers. Ooh, art designers. New art assets? I like me some new art assets. So you can't go wrong when you have new art assets. <coughs> oh, this guy already started it. Okay, cool. Just need to kill this guy. Let's tank everything. So this character, by the way, uses an ability called Key Shout. Nobody's ever used this ability before. But what this does, basically, is it allows me to use my... Um, eh. It allows me to use my co uh, Concentration instead of my Intimidate to do an Intimidate check. So my concentration is 29, so I can effectively have a very high Intimidate with just that. Could you use Shroud of the Vampire to become Vampire Squared? Also, don't say anything that will get you fired from the Player's Council. First of all, Player's Council is done in like two months. Also, I would never do that. <laughs> I have no incentive to tell you guys things that would get me taken off the Player's Council. I'm not on the Player's Council to leak cool information or to, you know, kind of get people's hopes up or whatever. I'm on the Players Council because I want to make the game into something that's better. Um, I already think the game is great, but I want to contribute my own words to the game to try to like make it a better place for everybody. Um, so I want I want to make sure there's cool stuff in the game. That's why, you know, uh, not Warlock, but uh, I was really passionate about a couple of the changes that went into the game. Um, it would be a dream job to be an, a, for an artist for DDO or SOTOR. Oh yeah, man. Like, I would absolutely, if I was given the opportunity, go to an office and sit and work at Turbine. There's a couple problems for hitting me. Uh, I'm not an American citizen. That's a huge problem. And also, uh, I don't know too much about coding or programming. I'm not a coder. Uh, I'm a talker. <laughs> 
I have some good ideas, and I make some good spreadsheets. And uh, that because when I actually do a lot of my character builds, I do like spreadsheet the shit out of that and make some math. Like I figure out what's good, breaking points, things like that. When I should start working, focusing on certain stats. Um, that's one of the reasons I. W one of the things I would really like is, if possible, at some point in a future update, I want Turbine to make it so that your combat log will save to a text file on your computer, a readable text file. Because if it saves to a readable text file, then what's going to happen is I will make sure, as soon as I can. Oh, I could get the heal in. I'm sorry, man. If I get that saved to a readable text file then what it means is that you any, or anyone who is ambitious enough can go ahead and make a parsing program that can actually figure out how much damage you're doing, how often monsters are actually making their saves against your spells, stuff like that. Because I like doing legendary elite slave lords, but, you know, I use my... It's, it's, like it's difficult to know exactly how much I'm missing. So do I want to get some more accuracy to make sure I'm not missing quite as often, or do I not care? Like, I don't know. You support a Durakan and Friends ticket for Players Council 2017. Make PC great again. I'm going to say it like this. Um, I will say it like this. If you would like to be on the Players Council, just apply. The applications come up in uh, in January, and if you think you'd be a good fit, it's easy. Just just go ahead and try it out. You know, um, When in your application they ask you to write a bit about yourself, just type properly. Just write a paragraph, then spell check it, uh, and then also make sure it actually represents you. You don't have to be like an extreme artist, or like you don't have to be uh, even like the most well versed or well read person, but just something clear and concise and that, you know, shows off your passion for the game, being like, you know, oh man, I like this thing, and I've always played this character class, and I really like it, and I think it's cool, and I like the way things have been going in the future, and I want to make sure more things can work like this in the future, and blah blah blah. Stuff like that, you know? Anybody can do it, and so if you want to be on the council, go for it. I think that more so than ever before, there needs to be a varied amount of players on the council, uh, you can't just have players like me on it. I'm very focused on partially like the new player experience and also the long-term player experience. I'm focused on both of these experiences, especially when I think of when I comment on things or things that get said. The problem is I don't really know that middle ground player experience. I'm not I'm not the kind of guy that plays like on the weekends, you know, sometimes or like, you know, plays like a couple times a month or plays with only a specific group of friends and doesn't really play the game that often. I'm the kind of guy that plays the game every fucking day. I play this game every day, okay? And usually for like two to three hours. So when I play the game for that much time, I get a very different perspective on the game than a lot of other people. So I really appreciate when there are other people on the council that can kind of check, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like check my privilege, like keep my mindset in check. Because they'll say, man, isn't it so easy to just do this thing? And they'll be like, no, it's not easy. This is really hard. It takes a long time and it's confusing. And I'll be like, oh, right there are players that aren't me playing this game. So, if, like I said, if you feel like you'd want to make the game better, join the Players Council. You don't get any cool swag for it, um, and people will send you angry letters, and sometimes, in some cases, like threats, which is hilarious, because you don't, you don't even work for the company. You're just like a dude on the forums. But it's worth it. I'm telling you. Whoa! It exploded. It's kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. Just like the parsing for Sotor. <coughs> S uh, for Sotor, World of Warcraft, anything like that. So, there you go. Google it. Goggles at times everything. Um, well, they're better than my goggles, because mine give accuracy, but I have better than that. I guess I'll take those. I give haste, too, so if you give me this. Damn it! No, the recall! Oh, no! Oh, damn it! That's the absolute worst. <sighs> this game is so hard, you guys. Oh my god. Okay, well... Uh, I apologize for the short stream that I'm doing today. I am very, very sick. There's a bed right behind me. I'm gonna go get into that bed. Because I am, like, uh, oh, very tired. <sighs> I gotta go to bed. Because I'm sleepy. So I want to thank you guys for watching today. Next week we'll be back to the full time. It is Halloween, so I will be here um, because no one's going to be coming to my house, and I also work the next day, so I don't really have a choice. 
I can't go out and do anything or get drunk, so I will be here sitting at my computer screen playing the game. So if you want to catch that next week, 7 to 10, you'll be able to see that as well. I'm going to try to get another stream in sometime this week, but I think that's going to be improbable. Like, there's a lot of other things that's going to be happening. So uh, if you do like what you're what you're watching, make sure you follow me on Twitter right here so you'll know when I'm streaming as well. You can go to twitch.tv slash shrimptom. Uh, follow me there, and you'll see when I'm fo when I'm doing stuff like that. Yeah, thank you for the well wishes, guys. Um, I'm also curious as well. Uh, think about we're we're gonna talk about this next week, so I'm gonna bring this up. Think about character classes that you would add to DDO, uh, and we're gonna come back next week. Uh, we're gonna have like a this is gonna be like your homework because I I really like this game, but I don't know. I don't know what kind of character you would add. It's the same problem when I thought about the game Lord of the Rings Online. People were like, oh, they should have a new class. They should have a new class after the Minds of Moria expansion. But they basically haven't added any new classes to that game because the problem is not that there's no creativity, but the classes are so diverse in that game, adding a new one just seems very challenging um, because you either have to come up with a completely new mechanic that just straight up doesn't exist um, or you're repeating yourself, you know? And it's kind of, with DDO, with the variety of mechanics that they have available, and because every class is almost split up into three classes, and then you can multi-class each one of those three classes, it makes it really difficult to even brainstorm ideas. So let's do that. Next week on the stream stream, we're going to have a section we're going to devote to talking about different character classes and potentially ideas for that. So come up with an idea, and we will do that next week. That's your homework. That's your stream work for the week. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.